year has passed since the pandemic forced many of us to shelter inside. And as we did, millions turned to an old friend for comfort and okay. inspiration. Here's Lee County. Welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. Bob Ross, with his curious hair and his whisper of a voice. In our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. He was perhaps an unlikely TV celebrity. Here's a happy little bush. He lives right there. But he became one of America's most famous painters, not only for his creativity, but for his positivity. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. It was like watching a magician reveal the secret of his trade. Look at that. Isn't that a nice little tree? But at the height of his fame, at only 52, Bob Ross died of lymphoma. That was 26 years ago. And yet, the happy little painter is perhaps more relevant now than ever. We've been in a time where things have been so frantic and people have been so stressed, and Bob Ross is the king of chill. <laughs> But what many may not know is that when Bob Ross came into our homes all those years ago, he did it from a home, this one in Muncie, Indiana. Nobody really thinks about where the show was made. So many people are surprised they walk in and they're like, this is not a TV studio. This is a living room. Yeah, it, it's a living room. They basically just took an old house. Jessica Jenkins is curator of that living room. What is now the Bob Ross Experience oh, wow. at Muncie's Minnetrista Museum. This very spot is where for years the joy of painting was taped. Those are his paintbrushes, his palette, and of course, his easy. Every episode he would have a moment where he would beat the devil out of the brush and he would take it and he would just thump, 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 thump. And just beat the devil. People come in and they recognize that. They know exactly what that is. But why Muncie? Well, because this was the home of the local PBS station. Traveling through the Midwest on a teaching tour, Ross approached the station with the idea of teaching in front of a camera. He was an unknown painter, though, at the time. Right? Nobody knew who Bob Ross was. They did not know who he was, but he had a lot of charm. Jim Needham was WIPB's general manager knew Ross had something. His mantra was, I'll never do anything harder than my audience is able also to do. Even if this is your first seascape, you'll have some super, super results. It wasn't really just about painting. The show was about a lot more than that. I think the show is about giving the person agency and doing what they want to do or doing something they were afraid to do. And I'm not talking about painting. I'm talking about life. Ross practiced his TV paintings for days making sure that he could complete them in front of a camera in less than half an hour. Maybe back in here. He was very planned out and very methodical. But it sure didn't come off that way. It came off as very spontaneous and, oh, and yeah. calm. It wasn't like he was racing through That's it. That's the thing about Bob. You know that on the inside, he was on a speed clock getting through that painting, but on the outside, he was just so relaxed and <laughs> made it look so easy. I'm just tapping here right along the bottom. Part of the Bob Ross experience is trying your hand at painting. You go like myself and Clue. But just a little. Take okay. a little bit on it. I see. So everybody needs a little friend. For certified Bob Ross instructor Doug Halgren, that discovery that anyone can do it is the real joy of painting. Sometimes we grab their hand and go, it's going to be okay. We're going to do this together. Just trust me on this. And they're like, oh, it worked. Right. Uh, that did come together. I'm pleased with it. And trees especially. Even mine was recognizable as something. It was a remarkable ego boost for everyone here. Oh, okay. After sitting down and painting a painting, I really believe I could do anything. His simplicity, though, often brought criticism. What did the art world think of him in general? The art world had mixed reviews. There were certainly a lot of people who categorized him as kitsch art. But if you look at the canvases that Bob did on his own time for himself, they are complex. Like this one, for example. An elaborate seascape that hung in his own home. The later he got on in years, those paintings just got sharper and sharper and sharper. 
Bob Ross rarely made a dime off any of his paintings, and he never expected any of his work to ever hang in a museum. But recently, the Smithsonian acquired four Bob Ross paintings to add to its permanent collection. Now then, look right here. And that, at least, the man who just wanted to paint a happy little world has cemented his place in it as well. The message of having self-confidence, of trying new things, that doesn't get old. And because of that, I think that it just continues to resonate for generation after generation. So from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. God bless. Hey, Tech Leads. This is Monday Dev, a platform to manage your entire product development lifecycle and connect everyone you work with. With Monday Dev, you have a view... childhood even though it was bad i love it i feel like it's taught me so much and i, I feel like nothing can phase me you know nothing in this world nothing can surprise me it might set me back but only momentarily only the spring back 